people, welcome to another video on the channel. And ladies and gentlemen, is a Nottingham Forest transfer rumour roundup. There is quite a lot that has happened in terms of the confirmed deal department. Uh, pretty much after this, this transfer video, they should be all back onto Mondays now, just for the Euros, etc. Just makes sense to post it when there isn't a Euros game on. So, yeah. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. But before you do, make sure you slap a like on the video, subscribe if you are new, and if you never want to miss a video, turn on the notifications bell. And without further ado, let's go. So we're going to start with the confirmed deals, starting with the big one, Elliot Anderson signs for a fee that's around 35 million great British pounds sterling. Now, listen, how I look at this is, it's not going to be 35 million quid up front. I've heard that there's all sorts of, you know, different clauses, etc. One of them being, you know, if we if we get into Europe. So, I, I'm very much well aware that it's not 35 million quid up front. I don't know how much it is exactly up front. I'm going to assume it's in the 20 million pound region. Newcastle needed to sell him for financial fair play and PSR reasons. You know, we need a new sort of younger central midfielder. He's exactly that. He's He has played in the Premier League. 26 appearances across all competitions last season, bagging two assists. Listen, he's, he's a decent player. Obviously, he's got some development still still to do, and he's going to probably get regular minutes. We're going to be offloading a fair few players, as Nuno has openly said that he likes a smaller squad. And I feel like the midfield department is probably the, arguably the most cluttered and also the most stacked area in the team. The Sangai has been linked with leaving. There's There's been all sorts of rumours. Mangala has left, which I'll get onto in a second. So, yeah, a lot of midfield exits and, you know, already confirmed exits have happened. So, it makes sense. And I feel like Anderson's probably going to be Nuno's, you know, first choice central midfielder. So, it all makes sense. And going the other way is Vouch. Now, at first, I did think this was part of the Anderson deal as like a swap. However, it is sort of separate. Apparently, the fee is in the early £1 million region, so maybe 1.3, 1.4 million, which is absolutely fine. This is about, he's not been great. I do think he's slightly better than Matt Turner. However, yeah, he's not starting Premier League material. We're still waiting on Carlos Miguel to be confirmed. It's almost, you know, set in stone, ready for, for him to be announced as a Forest player. And yeah, with also the signing of Matt Sells in January... Yeah, he's not, he's not going to play. He conceded 16 goals in seven games, kept just the one clean sheet. He, he was not fantastic. Do I think he's a capable backup as a Premier League goalkeeper? Absolutely do I think so. He He's definitely got the ability to be a backup goalkeeper. And Newcastle have definitely strengthened their backup goalkeeper regions. So I think, you know, he's a decent goalkeeper. I think if he wants regular football, then maybe go back to Greece or, or go abroad. Because I don't think he's going to start at any club specifically in the Premier League. However, he's a decent backup option. Wish him all the best. Not an awful goalkeeper, but definitely not the best. And surprisingly, Brandon, I still don't know how to say his name despite him being at the club for two years, but he has surprisingly left for Portugal side Rio Ave, which apparently Maranakis owns as well. So that sort of makes sense. However, I do think he had a little bit of potential that he could have unlocked at Forest. He had a loan spell the second half of the season at Bristol Rovers, where he did he did very well. His performances were very good. He made 12 appearances, scoring two goals. Had a bit of an injury out there, though. So I do think, you know, maybe a loan spell at like a top-end League One side, low-end championship, then come back and then maybe decide what to do with him then. But listen, he definitely wasn't going to start with the players that we've got in his position. He was not going to start at all. So, it sort of makes sense for the sake of him. Listen, he's Costa, He's a Costa Rican international. He's a decent player, just not quite Premier League ready yet. I do wish him all the best. You know, he played a handful of games for us off the bench, but nothing major. So, thinking about it, it does sort of make sense because he was never really going to play for us. However, for the sake of his career, it does make a lot of sense. The next player is Orel Mangala. His loan has been made a permanent. He spent the second half of the season out on loan at Lyon, where he did pretty well. And the fees around 20 million quid that has been paid. I mean, including the, the loan fee, etc. It's probably about 25 million pound that we have made from the man from Mangala. And seeming we paid about 10 to 12 million for him when we first signed him. That's not too bad. Don't get me wrong. He was a very good player. However, the midfield area, I think it's something that Nuno's going to look to trim down because, as I said, he does like a smaller squad. But he did make 22 appearances in his final half a season for us. Scored, scored a lovely goal. So, I don't think we can uh, we can complain about his services for Forrest. And he definitely was not a, a bad player. He was definitely someone who cared about the fan base, showed a bit of passion. So, I do believe that 
he was a very good servant for the club and you can't turn down the 20 million because obviously once we sort of want to clear out you know any sort of financial fair play issues the next player which is isn't technically confirmed yet but it's it could be confirmed by the time you're seeing this Musa Niakante also looks set to sign for Leon for also about 20 million pounds so if this deal does go through which I believe it should do it'll be all set signed and sealed by the time you, you'll be seeing this all within a day or so so 40 million quid pretty much from Mangala and Nia Carter. Don't get me wrong, he was a very good player for us. A little bit injury prone, did make 24 appearances for us last season. Got himself a goal. He was not a bad player at all, had a good burst of pace. Especially in our first season, he was very, very good. And when he was out injured, we did very much miss him. But listen, you can't turn down 20 million quid, which means there's a lot less pressure on the Murillo sale compa compared to what there was previously. So it's, it is very good and it'll be put towards obviously the Anderson signing as well, which I think the 20 million quid will cover the best part of all of the fee that we probably played up front for Anderson. So all, all being well, like we shouldn't have any financial fair play issues coming up for this season. Now looking at the rumoured incomings and outgoings, starting with the incomings, the first player being Jake O'Brien. He's a 23 year old Irish international, ironically playing out for Leon. Now, with the business that we have done with Leon, we could maybe, you know, strike a good deal here. Apparently, Leon value him at about 17 million euros. So, about 15 million quid, 17 million quid. So, I do think we could, you know, maybe get him a little bit of a cut price. How there are other clubs interested. Everton are interested and West Ham are also the reported clubs that are interested. So, how with the business that we have done with Leon, they might be more inclined to sell to us because we've given them two very, very good players. And I, I do think that if we can get him in, he's, he's a similar sort of player to Willy Bolly. Granted, Willy Bolly is made of candy floss, though. His, his ligaments, he gets injured all the time. Listen, if we get 15 games a season out of Willy Bolly, that is very good. He's also significantly younger, sort of similar player, as in he's quite tall. He's about six foot four, apparently. And partnered with someone, either Murillo or a player of, you know, similar calibre to Murillo, like, playing out from the back he's a good threat from set plays bagging five goals for a centre half that's very good all within the six yard box so as you'd expect from set plays good in the air he's someone that is good from defending set plays and attacking set plays so I think we can get him for the around the 15 million pound region which I think would be a very very good deal if we can pull this off and as I said with the business we've done with Leon I don't see why they wouldn't be willing to you know sell us a player in sort of return so I think we get him I'll be very very happy to see him partnered to Probably a Murillo replacement if we can get someone like a similar player, like pass out from the back, ball playing defender sort of thing. Then I think that would be a superb, superb potential partnership. If Murillo does somehow end up staying, then I think he'll be an adequate partner to go next to O'Brien. The next player is Asen Dio. He's an 18-year-old who's had his first breakout season in Spain for Real Betis. Made 33 appearances, scoring six goals, just 1,880 minutes. So not loads of starts in there, but still a fair few at just 18 as well. That's very good. We are reportedly looking at him. I'm sure other clubs will also be interested as well. There's not really anything that I could find saying that there was any set clubs interested. There's obviously going to be clubs interested though when you pull those sorts of numbers at just 18. He also helped Real Betis get to 7th place. So I think if we can get him, it will be a very good signing. Listen, with Hudson the Doy, there's been rumours of him and Elanga potentially going. Hopefully, all being well, they do both stay though because they were very, very good for us. Another backup, I think, another, you know, because we don't really have any real backups. Nuno tried to make a really work as a winger. It did not work in any way, shape or form. So a backup winger or two would not go amiss. We've been linked with a fair few. So I do think, especially at a decent price, I think we could maybe get him for around 10-ish million, maybe a little bit less, hopefully with some clever negotiating then I think it'll be good. However, I'm sure there's going to be other clubs that are interested. Say someone in Europe does come in for him, he's got European football, then I feel like he might be more inclined to go to one of them. So that will be, uh, that obviously is going to be difficult to compete with. But a backup winger to a Langer or Hudson Odoi would not go and miss, especially if you want to go far in the Cups. We're going to need a bit of depth, we're going to need some rotation. In terms of what I've seen from stats and compilation videos, which Take of that what you will. He does look like he's got a good burst of pace. Does like to cut inside quite a bit. So a similar sort of player to Hudson Odoi, whereas Alanga, he likes to sort of run at, you know, defenders, put the crosses into the box, whereas uh, Hudson Odoi likes to, you know, cut inside, get shots away. So it's so, uh, sort of similar to more Hudson Odoi than Alanga, but has the similar sort of pace attributes from what I can tell. 
than a Langer. So, lots of positives to look at, and I think if we could get him at a decent price, I don't see why not. Maybe Betis will want to loan him out rather than selling him. We'll have to wait and see. But I do think he would be a very, very good addition. The next player is Wesley. He is playing out in Brazil for our favourite Brazilian team. Corthians is, I think, how you pronounce it. The same the same club that Moreno came from and Carlos Miguel currently plays for. So we could potentially be signing a third player. However, there are other clubs interested, of course. He is 19. He made 34 appearances last season, getting five goals and three assists. Not too bad. If he's anything like Murillo, then I do think we would have a very, very good player. It's clear Nuno is trying to, you know, bulk up our winger options because, as I said, aside from Hudson Adoy and Alanga, we don't have many options. So if we get an injury in one of those areas, we're looking incredibly, incredibly light. Gibbs White could probably do a job there. However, you know, you want an actual out and out winger to fill in that gap if one of them does get injured or hits a poor run of form. We did apparently inquire about him and our inquirement was, you know, was turned down. So I take it we tried to low boy, which I don't think is a terrible move to make. However, I it looks like they're gonna want about 17 million euros, so about 15 million quid, which is quite a lot for someone who is 19 years old. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure they've seen how Murillo's performed and they sold uh, they sold it for about 10 million. I'm sure they're going to want more money just because of how someone coming from the same area, same club, has performed in the Premier League, which is understandable. I believe Brentford are also interested. And, you know, if a lot of the time, if Brentford are interested in you, you're normally quite a good player with their scouting network. So if we can get him, I think it's going to cost us the best part of 20 million. But as I said, we've sold Nia Kartik, we've sold Mangal, that's 40 million already raised. Plus the likes of the Freuler departure, I'm sure more players will leave, especially if Murillo leaves, then we definitely do have a, uh, some money to play with. So overall, in terms of what his attributes are, he looks, I haven't seen as, as much from him compared to the other players, but he looks like he does have a good strike from range from him. I can't really tell if he likes if he's more like Hudson Adorn likes to cut inside or more like a Langer to run at players, but we will have to wait and see. And finally, potential outgoing is Callum Hudson Adoy has been linked with a few clubs from Tottenham to Newcastle. Now, don't get me wrong, listen, if we can if we're holding out for that 20 million and the 20 million comes in, we will be quite daft to say no. But apparently Hudson Adoy does want to stay, which would be the smart thing, just because it's his first proper season since 2019, since 2020 playing a lot of games and getting good numbers. So I don't know if he would want to, you know, take that risk and, and jump ship and not play as many minutes because the clubs that are looking at him will probably want him to be a backup option. So if I was him, I would stay. But then again, I am, you know, I'm going to look at it in a slightly biased context. But don't get me wrong, he's a fantastic player and I hope to see him progress and I'd love to see how he progresses under Nuno in a full season, hopefully under Nuno as well. So yeah, it will be it'll be interesting to see. However, if he does go, we will make a very very hefty profit for just the three million quid that he did cost us. But thank you all for watching this transfer video. As I said, they will be back on Mondays going forwards now or Tuesdays. So that is that is all good. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe if you are new, and if you never want to miss a video, turn on the notifications bell. Feel free to follow the TikTok. It's linked in the description. And I will see you all very soon. Stay safe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.